Unbeknownst to humans, giants have been stealing their children during the night to eat them. However, after one little girl spots a giant in the night, things change. It is midnight in the city of London, and a young girl named Sophie is making sure all the doors and windows of her orphanage are properly closed, because this is the hour known as the witching hour, when people go missing. As Sophie takes all the precautions, the shadow of something or someone massive lurks through the town. While the rest of the children at the orphanage sleep, Sophie stays up in her bed reading. The orphanage cat spots something and goes out on the balcony. Sophie follows the cat outside and sees a giant man in the street. The giant notices that Sophie has seen him. Scared out of her mind, Sophie hides in her blanket, but the giant reaches into the orphanage and grabs Sophie along with her blanket. Carrying Sophie, the giant starts making his way out of the town. He avoids being spotted by other people through a series of clever tricks. After he gets out of the town, the giant runs across the countryside towards the cliffs, taking massive leaps using his long legs. Finally, he takes a huge leap and jumps into some clouds. They arrive in a strange land, where the giant carries Sophie into his house. The giant hangs Sophie in her blanket and begins chopping up some vegetables for a stew. Sophie tries to escape when the giant is not looking, but she makes a racket and the giant hears her. The giant speaks to Sophie and tells her that she can't escape unless she has wings. Sophie asks him where they are, and he replies they are in giant country. More giants are heard outside, and Sophie begs this one to not eat her. The giant laughs at her and tells her that he is not a monstrous cannibal. He would never eat her. Sophie contests that he is a monster because he stole her. The giant replies that he feels very bad for doing that, especially for her mother and father. Sophie says that she's an orphan, so she doesn't have any parents. She asks the giant if the other giants are nice like him, and he replies that they are not. They would eat her up without a second thought. He also adds that compared to him, the other giants are massive. He is a runt in giant country. Sophie asks him why he brought her here, and he replies that he had to. If he didn't, she would tell everyone that she saw a giant, and he would be captured by the humans and put in a zoo. Sophie promises him that she won't tell anyone and asks him to take her back home, but he does not believe her. He says she will now live the rest of her life here with him. Sophie says that if he doesn't let her go, she will run away, and he warns her that if she ever leaves this house without him, the other giants will eat her up. The giant takes out a jar with a blue light moving inside it, and Sophie inquires about it. The giant says it's a dream, and Sophie says that dreams aren't actual things. The giant reads Sophie's book, and Sophie falls asleep. As she sleeps, the giant goes into a deeper part of his house where there are loads of jars with lights moving inside them. He grabs a jar with a red light and begins working on it. Sophie wakes up and finds that the giant is sleeping. She takes the opportunity to escape through a window. However, as she is running away, a much bigger giant emerges in front of her and grabs her. Sophie screams for help, but the friendly giant just closes the door to his cave house because he is helpless. The massive giant flips Sophie up and swallows her. Sophie wakes up and realizes this was all a dream that the friendly giant specifically gave her to prove to her that dreams are actual things. The next morning, the giant is drinking a fizzy drink called the Frobscottle, and Sophie notices that the bubbles in the drink float downward as opposed to upward, like they do in normal drinks. She points this out, and the giant says that upward-floating bubbles cause nasty burps. Sophie argues that downward-floating bubbles probably come out in a much worse way, but the giant doesn't seem to mind that. He lets out a massive gas that lifts him off the ground like a rocket. He thoroughly enjoys it. Just then, one of the massive human-eating giants arrives, and the friendly giant hides Sophie to protect her. During the tricky situation, Sophie hides inside a vegetable and very narrowly avoids being eaten after the friendly giant convinces the other giant that he hates vegetables and he only eats human beings. Afterward, the friendly giant takes Sophie into the depths of his cave house and helps her clean up. He gives her a bunch of clothes to pick out a new outfit. Sophie puts on a red jacket she finds, and the giant gives her a strange, almost sad look when he sees her. Sophie asks him what's the matter and he doesn't answer. He places Sophie in a comfortable room inside a tree and says that he is going out to do his job, which is catching dreams. Sophie says she wants to go with him, but he strictly refuses. 
Sophie looks at some of the dreams in the jars and sees them take form. She stubbornly insists on going with the friendly giant, and he finally agrees. They step outside of the cave house and find all the vicious giants sleeping. They try to sneak past them, but they wake up and grab the friendly giant by the leg. Sophie rushes and hides in a broken old car, while all the vicious giants bully the friendly giant. They use him as a football and throw him around. Sophie can't believe that he is not standing up for himself. Suddenly it starts raining, and all the vicious giants run and hide because they hate water. The friendly giant puts Sophie in his bag and runs away. Unbeknownst to him, he accidentally leaves Sophie's blanket behind, and the other giants smell it and realize that he has a human with him. Sophie and the giant arrive in a place that the giant calls the Dream Country. Sophie sees that the stars above are shining bright. The giant says that on a clear enough night, his massive ears can hear music coming from the stars. He says that he also hears insects talking in the ground, ladybugs walking on the leaves, plants and leaves talking to each other, and all the secret whisperings of the world. Sophie notices the reflection of the giant tree in the water and sees that it is full of dreams. The giant says that at one point somebody called him the Big Friendly Giant. He jumps into the water and enters a different dimension. He asks Sophie to follow him, and she does. They both stand in front of the tree where all dreams begin. The Big Friendly Giant notices a golden dream and says that it's a very rare type. He tries to catch it, but it continually escapes him. The dream slows down near Sophie, and he says the dream recognizes her. He adds that when he listens to it, he can hear her voice. He puts the dream in a jar, labeling it Sophie's dream. Sophie helps the giant catch dreams until she comes across a red one, which is a nightmare. The giant grabs the red dream and explains that the red dream is one of regret. It shows people the horrible things they've done and tells them there is no forgiveness. The giant pulls Sophie out of the other dimension, and they get on their way. During the walk, Sophie says that from now on she will call the big friendly giant BFG. Sophie and BFG arrive in London, where BFG uses his giant trumpet to blow happy dreams toward people while they sleep. He narrates the happy dreams for Sophie, and she loves them. As they are walking back home, they see all the other giants going out to hunt for human children to eat. Sophie says they have to figure out a way to put an end to this. During this conversation, they also deduce that Sophie dropped her blanket back in giant country, and suddenly, BFG's face becomes stern. Next, Sophie wakes up in front of the orphanage. BFG says that because they dropped her blanket in giant country, the other giants now know of her existence, so she is no longer safe with him. Sophie insists that they can stop the other giants together, but BFG tells her a story of how once, he took another boy to giant country. The boy saw BFG just like Sophie did, so BFG had to take him. The red jacket that Sophie found belonged to that boy. After some time, the other giants found out about the boy, and BFG did not bring him back home in time to save him from their wrath. BFG concludes that he won't repeat that mistake with Sophie, and he leaves, despite Sophie's protests. Sophie sits on the balcony of the orphanage and speaks to BFG, knowing that his giant ears can still hear her. She says she can sense him nearby, and to get him to reveal himself, she jumps off the balcony. BFG catches her. The two return to giant country and begin thinking up a plan to stop the other giants. Just then, the other vicious giants arrive and start looking for Sophie all over the house. They wreck BFG's work in the process. Sophie barely avoids being spotted by the giants, and finally BFG decides he's had enough. He chases the vicious giants out of his home with a flaming rod. Meanwhile, Sophie is hiding in the room that BFG made for the last boy he brought to giant country. She spots a picture of the queen and comes up with a plan. They create a custom dream for the queen which shows giants eating children and the army stopping them. The dream also includes Sophie and BFG. When she wakes up from that dream, Sophie and BFG will meet her and she will be inclined to listen to them. They arrive at the palace and blow the dream toward the queen while she sleeps. The queen wakes up and tells the dream to her assistant, who says that it is curious, because children have in fact been mysteriously disappearing across the country. As the queen's assistant goes to close the curtains, she finds Sophie standing there, and the queen recognizes her from the dream. 
Sophie tells the queen everything, and the queen believes her because she just saw it all in her dream. Sophie then introduces BFG to the queen, who awkwardly makes her acquaintance. Next, the queen informs the generals about the threat of the giants while setting up a lunch for BFG. Due to his giant mannerisms, the lunch is an awkward and hilarious affair. BFG even makes the queen, and all her servants and generals try frobscottle, which gives them incredible gas. Next, BFG leads the royal army to giant country. He creates a dream of regret to give the other vicious giants, so that they would wake up full of remorse and be easy targets for the army. Sophie and BFG sit and discuss Sophie's golden dream. Sophie asks what the dream is about, and BFG replies that it's Sophie's dream of a normal life. He says she will have it, but not here in giant country. She must go back to her world. Sophie asks if BFG will still hear her whenever she calls out to him, and in reply, he just points to his massive ears. The time comes to blow the dream toward the giants, and BFG realizes he's forgotten his trumpet back in London. When he's not looking, Sophie grabs the dream jar and takes it right in the middle of the sleeping giants. She is about to open it when one giant wakes up. Sophie manages to break the jar and fill the remaining giants with regretful dreams, but the first one remains lucid and normal. He is about to attack Sophie when BFG steps in and defends her. The giant prepares to punch BFG when the royal army arrives and stops him. The royal army captures and restrains all the vicious giants and proceeds to carry them away, finally freeing giant country from their terror. The vicious giants are carried to a remote island from which there is no escape. The only thing they are given to eat for the rest of their days is vegetables. They are not happy about it. Next, Sophie wakes up at the Queen's Palace and is greeted by her assistant. Meanwhile, BFG now has giant country all to himself. He is growing a garden full of delicious vegetables and working on writing a book about all his adventures. Back at the palace, Sophie says, Good morning, BFG, to the air, knowing full well that BFG can hear her wherever he is, and sure enough, he does. The end. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.